Welcome back to Switch to Linux and another Distro Wars. And today we're going to be looking at two Linux distributions that are specifically built for doing production. AV Linux and Ubuntu Studio. Now, we will start by saying that uh, the way to use these applications is going to use like a lot of nodal working with the, um, uh, the Alsa Jack applications, which do not work in VirtualBox. And so I'm not going to be able to show you that specific function, but I'll kind of show you how you can set stuff up and how to get audio working. What I did actually do is I have a, um, I did actually put everything on the a live key to experiment with them with real hardware just to verify everything. And that was good. And I thought about using the capture card and going through and just doing the video on live hardware instead. But we're not actually showing a full how to use these. I just kind of want to show you some of the advantages and disadvantages of each of these from the perspective of uh, what you might want as a creative person. Now, both of these have recently undergone some major base changes. AV Linux used to be based on Debian. It is now based on MX Linux, which is an excellent port of Debian. This brings it the MX Linux tools uh, and a lot of extra functions and features MX Linux does to make Debian work better. And I think that this is going to be a major step forward in AV Linux. Ubuntu Studio recently switched to Plasma. So if you grab the 2004, it is still XFCE and the 2010, which is what we're using today, is actually based on Plasma. However, Ubuntu Studio does now have an install script on any uh, uh, Ubuntu desktop. So you can install any Ubuntu flavor and then run a Studio script to go ahead and get that installed. Let's go ahead and have a look at their projects. Now, first, one of the, the downsides of doing the full-fledged comparison like this is that AV Linux is a very good uh distro, but it's also somebody's hobby project. There's one guy who does it in his spare time. Ubuntu Studio is a project, a full project with a lot of people working on it. So we have to keep that in mind. Uh, but this guy is at bandshed.net. He is an audio producer. And so he has produced uh, he has produced AV Linux to help with some audio. Now, some people said, I think in the comments earlier on or, or somewhere else recently the, attached to this video, they said, well, I never got the idea of using this rather than just installing any Linux distribution adding the software. Well, AV Linux actually installs several scripts to make some things work better and faster. So it does take a lot of time out of that. Also, you may not know what all applications are available and what to do with it. So both of these bring with them a suite of software. AV Linux is specifically audio video stuff versus Ubuntu Studio, which is an entire suite of a lot of different types of creative development. And so that's going to be one of your major differences. But you can see here some screenshots. They do have a full a, a full user manual, which you are going to want to go through. There's tools like resetting, uh, resetting the ALSA drivers and things. Um, and everything they're going to want to do on both of these with respect to audio is going to use through the, um, the Jack application. I'll show you how it works. But again, that's the thing that does not work on virtual machine. But this is not a comprehensive review of either of these applications, just a compare and contrast between them. So you can head on over there. Of course, they the new version is, as we said, based on MX Linux, which I think is going to bring it a huge step forward. Ubuntu Studio, you see here we have the uh, 2004 LTS is still based on XFCE. The 2010 is now based on Plasma. But if you want to run it on any other desktop, there is a, um, there is a, a script for that. And let's go to the downloads page. I think that's where I saw it. So Ubuntu Studio 2004, 2010, and they have, where's it at? Where is that at? I thought it was right on the home page, uh, but there is a way to install it on anything else. So, oh, there you go. Don't want Plasma? Try Ubuntu Studio installer on any other Ubuntu flavor. So go ahead and click down to the installer. And then the first thing you do is you install whichever of your Ubuntu flavor you prefer. And then you apt install Ubuntu Studio dash installer. And then this is actually going to give you a variety. Now, 
this port here is actually going to give us some of the old installer which says, oh, you want to do graphics, but you don't really care about photography, for example. You have the ability to uh, add or remove applications. On this Plasma build, they streamlined it to make it simpler, but that also means you have a lot of extra software installed. And if you're not into photography and have no idea what a raw camera file is, you're going to be having lots of extra stuff on your computer. So using the Ubuntu Studio installer might be a better option if you know what you're doing, you're a little bit more advanced, and you only want a certain suite of applications. Nevertheless, they are, uh, they're both going to uh, get you Ubuntu Studio set up. So what we're going to do here is let's go ahead and uh, jump on over to AV Linux first. And then what we're going to do is have a look at um, what it looks like, how it's all configured, and then we'll look at Ubuntu Studio next. So let's go ahead and uh, watch it start up. It doesn't give us the... Uh, it doesn't give us a, a nice splash screen or anything, but that's perfectly okay. It's going to go ahead and get started, and then we should hopefully get a full screen um, uh, login screen here. Here we are. It does look pretty nice. We do have to enter in our username and my password, which is uh, super secret passwords, definitely not one, two, three. And we'll go ahead and get logged in. And then you can see that we land on uh, on the desktop here with a uh, probably plank is probably what our panel is here, or it's a, just a panel highly configured. We do have on the desktop, we have an FAQ, we have an MX user's manual, and we have an AV Linux user's manual. You are going to want to flip through that at least to get your basic setup uh, created. So we do have a few things down here. Since this is primarily for AV, we have this application that is the Quick Jack Control. This is the part here that does not work on virtual machines, but the idea behind it is you go ahead and get it set up, and the initial theming they've given me does not render the everything quite right in here. Um, that's maybe a, a limitation of it, but just want to pick whatever your interfaces are, um, and then you have a variety of other options and then hit your OK. And then when you start it, what it's supposed to do is this is going to use, if you've ever done anything with like Blender or um, Natron or anything else that's like a seriously advanced that uses node editors, we actually have a node editing application built into this guy, which is this connect application. Let me see if I can make it a little smaller here. And this guy here is basically, it is going to be a uh, a node where you can connect different things to different portions in the system. And the idea here is that you boot up applications and then you can map things to certain locations, which is going to make some things work right. So they do have hydrogen, which is a uh, drum sequencing tool on here. And uh, what we'll see here is that uh, if I go ahead and, and get this guy started, then it will actually play and we'll, we should see the audio peaks here, but no audio runs through. That is an artifact of virtual machine. If I were not on a virtual machine, this would be playing audio. Hydrogen would be feeding its data into, um, into the jack here, and then I could highly configure how this audio works. And that's the advantage behind this. Now, what this AV Linux does that Ubuntu Studio does not do that is nice is under your setups, they actually have some startup scripts which are going to, the developer of this has created things to automatically configure things to make everything work so that you don't have audio problems when Jack is not running. Because once you run it, you have to stop it in order to bring your audio back to under your system's control. Because this guy's gonna hijack the system control. But this actually runs some scripts which makes things really useful. So now that has turned off. As far as other applications, we have our basic MX Linux, MX tools. We have Office. Now he's downplayed and he's stripped out a lot of the Office. I think he only has uh, Writer installed maybe. Uh, and this is just to make room for the system resources for all of the audio video. So the AG Snapshot, we have the Alsa Mixer, we have our door. Um, we don't have LMMS installed on here. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, we do have Hydrogen. We have Handbrake, Kaden Live, uh, Media Info, Music Box. There's just so many audio video tools already installed. Although they are kind of all in the one multimedia, and there's not a lot else that we have here. We do have 
Blender for graphics. We have GIMP. We have Inkscape. So we do actually have uh, have everything that you need for audio video and not a whole lot else. But you are going to get a nice MX Linux system. It's going to work out very well for you. And when you get everything all set up and configured, uh, oh, this is the other one I should show you too. Uh, when you get everything set up and configured, it works out very well. So here's your basic, um, just some basic setup stuff. Under your miscellaneous, you can kill applications. You can restart Pulse Audio. You can uh, kill the Jack D. So if it's doing some Something weird. Now, if you don't want some of this extra software, you can hit the remove demo software button. This is actually going to go through and um, it's going to go through and, and remove a lot of the extra software, particularly the things that are not necessarily FOSS. Here you can configure uh, Wine, LinVSD, uh, Wine ASO. So there's a lot of cool features that we have inside of it. Theming is overall pretty nice, albeit it doesn't seem to work quite as well with uh, with some of the applications. But hey, you can just boot this guy up and change the theme to something else. That's perfectly acceptable and it'll probably work as well. So there is AV Linux. And uh, if I can't exit out of that guy, but uh, okay, that's uh, yeah, just kill it. It's because I have this loaded in the background. All right, so there's AV Linux. Let's go ahead and have a look at Ubuntu Studio next. All right, so here we are over on Ubuntu Studio. You can see we are running Plasma here. Uh, just an FYI for you guys that did not catch the live. Yeah, I didn't run the Plasma one the first time. <laughs> I want to go ahead and show you guys the latest, especially since that's what I said I was going to do at the beginning. So we went ahead and installed this. And uh, we get logged in. And one of the things about Plasma is it does look really nice. Um, you can see here the the loading screens. It's all professional all the way uh, with, uh, with what we see. And uh, we'll go ahead and get here on the desktop. All right, so here we are on the desktop, and let's go ahead and uh, have a look at what's going on with our menu. Now, this is going to be a little bit laggier just here on my computer, simply because uh, it is running Wayland on a virtual machine. If I was on real hardware, it would not be laggy. So if you notice a little bit of lag, that's, that's why. It's just exclusively because of my virtual machine. So here we have audio production. We have graphic design and video production as three separate pullout menus. So depending on what you are looking for, if you're into audio, into graphics, or into video, that's actually good. Now, one of the things I will mention here is that um, here on the basic download and install, we don't have the choice that we used to have as to advanced install and install just the suites that you want, be it audio or graphics or video. But you can actually do that if you use the Ubuntu Studio installer on top of any other uh, on top of any other um, Ubuntu build. So you can see over here under our applications, if you're doing photography, we have Darktable, we have um, let's see, we have Digicam, uh, just a few other things, uh, tethered camera control and capture. That might be one I want to play around with. We do have, um, let's see, graphic utilities. And then we have, uh, there's Blender, there's an ebook reader. We have GIMP, we have Inkscape, we have Krita. Just a lot of different things that you might need for doing your graphic design stuff. Going back under our audio production, again, audio utilities. Here's our quick jack that uh, we're not going to look at again. We looked at that in, in the AV. It's not going to work on the virtual machine, but it will work on real hardware just fine. We have um, an auto tuner for jack. We have just a variety of other things. Here's gu Guitarix. Actually, this is something that's also in AV Linux. I didn't show over there, so let's go ahead and boot it up over here. So um, basically a Linux virtual guitar amplifier. Let's, uh, let's ignore Jack for now. Um, if you'd want to not ignore it if you're actually using it in a live system. Here you can turn on your gains. You have your audios, some presets. There's tuners. Just a variety of different things. So if you can plug in, uh, plug in your device, you can go ahead and do that. So we have a variety of other things. Here's our instruments. So a variety of different uh, tools there. Here's some effects. And then we have installed, we have Ardor, we have LMMS. Uh, do we have Hydrogen as well? So you have a variety of different music suite applications for the people that are involved in, in that. Video production, this is set pulled out separate. We have Blender, we have some disc burning, Caden Live. Uh, do we have, uh, I think on the 
Do we have open shot on this one? No, we didn't have open shot on this one. So from the 2004 to the 2010, they did drop a few packages. You could still install them if you wanted to. Uh, as far as using this, I, as much as I usually really like this particular menu, it's mostly because of the Wayland lag on the virtual machine. It's a lot harder to use. Uh, that's actually just, a, again, a function of the virtual machine. But as far as how these guys are, are comparing, uh, I do like that we have the ability to isolate out the audio, the graphic, and the video from one another so they're not all mixed together in, in one giant lump. As far as the tools and settings, there are more software applications available on Ubuntu Studio. And the new Plasma build is actually nice, nicer, sleeker in design. And it's gonna work, it's gonna work pretty well. And I'm, I'm pretty confident of that. You can see uh, everything else it has. It's just basically an Ubuntu build with the other applications on top of it. It doesn't give us the scripts that AV Linux do does as far as uh, setting up and automatically configuring the jack. And it doesn't have quite as many of the system tools as AV Linux has. And so as far as, uh, as, far as that's concerned, let's kind of talk about which one of these is the better or not the better. But what is the final verdict if you are looking at wanting to create with, with different things? Well, it, it kind of depends. If you know what you're doing and you only want a couple of a couple of certain applications, AV Linux is probably going to be the better go-to place. It's going to work well. MX Linux is very solid. And all of the functions on my testing with it have actually worked out very well. So the only limitation, of course, if you're into photography, AV Linux is not going to be good for you because that's not what it's designed for, whereas Ubuntu Studio does. If you're unsure and you're just kind of getting into Linux production, I would probably steer towards Ubuntu Studio because it's going to have a lot more tools installed in it that you have to look at and then say, oh, how does this work, rather than having to scour the internet for something to install and test. Everything's going to be installed, configured, and ready to go. So so as far as uh, if you're an advanced AV producer and you kind of know what you're doing already, I would steer you towards AV Linux. If you are new to production on Linux and you're just learning and experimenting, I'd probably go with Ubuntu Studio. Both of them are going to be excellent. And again, um, MX uh, with uh, AV Linux based on MX, they have a way to install extra desktop environments after it's installed. Here on Ubuntu Studio, you actually have the ability to install an extra desktop and then install Ubuntu Studio on top of it. So both of them are going to give you the option for whatever desktop environment you want. As far as which is the easiest desktop environment to navigate, uh, XFCE is. So if you're looking for the ease of navigation out of the box, AV Linux is going to be easier for that. So there's my final thoughts and conclusions. You can help support the channel if you'd like. Have a look at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.